Hello everyone, welcome to Talents Prince. So in this session of geography, we shall discuss the climate of the world. So first tell me, what is the difference between weather and climate? Are they both same or are they different? Guess what could be the answer? So they are different. So how they are different, we shall see now. So first, the terminology related to the weather or climate, first we shall see. So first, what is temperature? So temperature is nothing but it's a degree of hotness or coldness. So if it is more hot, we say it is hot. If it is cold, if it, is having, if it has a lesser temperature, we say it is cold. Then what is weather? What is the difference between weather and climate? So weather is nothing but it is the atmospheric conditions of a specific place between a time period of particularly a one day or 24 hours. So if I say the atmospheric condition of this day today, then it is a weather. So if I take the average weather phenomenon, either for a month or for a year, it is called as climate. Today it is hot, today it is cold, that is called weather. If it is daily hot, we say it is tropical climate. If it is daily cold, it is temperate climate. If it is daily snowy here, we say it is a polar climate. So this is a major difference between weather and climate. Moving on, the factors the climate depends upon. So the factors the climate depends on first is latitudinal location from the equator, whether you are in northern hemisphere, whether you are in southern hemisphere, whether you are near to equator, whether you are far away from equator, whether you are near the poles. Because Earth is in almost a sphere shape, that is geoid shaped. So equator will receive more heat than the poles, right? So if you are near equator, you will have you will be having tropical climate. If you are in the mid latitudes, you will be having temperate climate. If you are in near the poles, you will be having polar climate. So latitude where you are positioned is very important. Okay, that's why Antarctica will be in having six months uh, sun and six months it has no sun that's why it is called as land of midnight sun arctic region or antarctic region right so next is distance from the sea or continentality we call it as continentality so what do you mean by distance from sea so distance from sea generally winds are associated with the water so if you are nearby the sea you are under the control of the sea that means winds will be carrying the water so that you will be having moderate influence. If you are far away from the sea, you will be having higher temperatures, extreme high temperatures or extreme low temperatures. Example is suppose if you take Hyderabad, you will be having a moderate temperature compared to Delhi because it is far away from the sea. Hyderabad is very nearer than Delhi. That's why Delhi has extreme uh, summers and extreme winters. Hyderabad has very normal climates, medium climates like that. So distance from the sea that is called as continentality also differs. Next is physiography. That means the terrain or land. If you are in a mountain, it will be very, uh, if you are on normal uh, mean sea level, you will be having higher temperature. If you go up, the temperature will decrease. So you will be having lesser temperature. That is called physiography or terrain of the land. Next is monsoon winds. So winds will always, uh, winds are the only ones which cause the climate to differ mainly right and next is upper air circulation how the upper air circulation is going on how different winds are blowing in the upper atmospheres next is el nino and la nina we'll see what are those el nino and la nina next is tropical cyclones if you are nearby equator you have cyclones particularly so we have in la mid latitude also but the effect is more in tropical cyclones okay and western disturbance we shall see what are those First is Coriolis force. So what do you mean by Coriolis force? So as the earth is in rotation, earth moves from west to east, we know it, right? So as the earth moves from one place to another, that is from on its own axis from west to east. So what is this west to east? It rotates from western direction to eastern direction on its own axis. It takes around 24 hours, right? So suppose if I place any moving object around the earth, it will not get deflected, right? Suppose if I if I throw any object on a moving object, it will surely get deflected because of the surrounding atmosphere also rotates, right? Surrounding dust particles will also rotate with the earth. So when I blow a wind around the above the earth, if it is in the dust particles, it all also get deflected. So this is called Coriolis effect. Suppose if I pass a uh, wind from 
north pole to the equator the earth doesn't rotate it will not get deflected if earth rotates the wind will surely get deflected because of the movement of the or the rotation of the earth this is called Coriolis effect okay so this Coriolis effect is zero at the equator and highest at the poles okay so you can clearly see in the northern hemisphere the wind will be deflected towards the right and in the southern hemisphere the wind will get deflected towards the left so in the northern hemisphere right and in the southern hemisphere it will be deflected towards left remember this because of the Coriolis force so Coriolis force is caused because of the rotation of the Sun from west to east so this will deflect the wind particularly so winds what is wind what is the difference between wind and air are they both same no so wind is nothing but the air in action the movement of air air means it is static when air starts move moving from one place to another it is called wind so how the wind moves because of the gradient or slope so how the slope is created because of the pressure difference so what is this high pressure low pressure so simply understand this concept okay be observe this carefully so how this happens so take a person who is smoking right so does the smoke rise up or fall down it will rise up right so how it is rising up we'll see now so there comes temperature so whenever air gets heated up the particles of air will expand that means they will lose their weight so when they expand the distance between particles will increase so they become lighter and escape that means higher temperature lower pressure okay so whenever the air particles cooled up in the polar regions they get higher weight so as they get higher weight or heavier weight they will settle down that means high pressure so high temperature is associated with low pressure and low temperature is associated with high pressure that's why in equatorial region because of the air is getting uh, high temperatures it will expand that's why winds will brew from poles to the equator particularly because poles are at high pressure regions and equator is at low pressure region because of the temperature difference right this is a very basic concept to explain this climate moving on to types of wind so wind will move from high pressure area to low pressure why high pressure area to low pressure area because high pressure area has heavier weights so it will move to a low pressure area if you are getting air towards you means you are at low pressure area they are coming from high pressure area towards you because you are at low pressure area moving on to types of winds so we have three types of winds in the world first is permanent winds in that we have the trade winds westerlies and easterlies they are also called as planetary winds permanent winds and next is seasonal winds they come in one season and they will not be seen in other season that's why they are called seasonal winds example is monsoon winds the next is local winds the land breeze sea breeze valley breeze particular to that area that's why they are called as regional or local winds so these are the three types of winds so first we shall discuss about permanent winds why they are called permanent because they blow throughout the year local means because they are blowing at that place at that time only okay so permanent means means they blow throughout the year so there are three types of permanent winds first is trade winds next is westerlies next is easterlies why they are called trade winds because earlier in the history parts the, the traders who used to move from one place to another on ships they used to follow these trade winds so they th they thought that these trade winds will guide them that's why they are called as trade winds okay and these trade winds are blowing from the tropic of cancer in the northern hemisphere to the tropic of capricorn in the southern hemisphere. So they blow between this 30 degree north around 30 degree north to 30 degree south you can clearly see in the diagram see so why they are blowing generally winds blow from high pressure area to low pressure area why there is low equatorial low because why there is low pressure at equator because there is higher temperature the highest temperature will be on the earth at equator only because it gets heat first so high temperature means low pressure so corresponding area will be at high pressure so winds will blow from northeast to 
equator that's why they are called as northeast trade winds and southeast to towards equator southeast trade winds understood about trade winds equatorial low is also called as doldrums remember this is a very repeated question doldrums belt is at equator only at zero degree latitude around five degree north to five degree south as a equatorial low because it is low because it is at low pressure next is the westerlies so why they are called westerlies they blow from the western regions of the world towards eastern regions okay and they blow in the mid latitudes particularly after the trade winds particularly from 40 degree to 65 degrees either in south or in north both in northern latitudes as well as southern latitudes okay we can see in the diagram how they are blowing we know already that is uh, the winds which are blowing as trade winds are northeast trade winds and southeast trade wind they are blowing from subtropical high regions or they are also called as horse latitudes this is also repeated question horse latitudes are at around the tropic of cancer or around the tropic of capricorn at the 30 degrees north or 30 degrees south so now this region is at high and the next region will be at low so that's why the winds will blow from southwest direction to northeast direction for westerlies in the northern hemisphere and for the southern hemisphere for westerlies they will blow from the northwest to southeast direction okay clear with this and moving on to easterlies so as they are blowing from eastern side to the western side they are called easterlies particularly the, they blow after the westerlies okay they are blowing from southeast to northwest in the southern direction and from northeast to southwest that's why they are called as polar easterlies they are blowing from polars okay as the subpolar is at low pressure region and polar region is at high pressure region these blinds blow like this so remember this diagram is very important so doldrums belt is at equatorial low horse latitudes at trub, subtropical high subpolar low and polar regions so this is very important trade winds westerlies and easterlies they blow throughout the year that's why they are called permanent winds or planetary winds moving on to seasonal winds so as they are blowing in one season and they don't blow in other season that's why they are called as seasonal winds so very best example is monsoon winds so the monsoon the word is derived from an arabic word called mausam it means season it means they come in one season and they don't come in another seasonal reversal of winds is called as monsoon this was a question once in prelims examinations of upsc next is local winds so local winds are generally particular to that place and they are uh, they vary from place to place and generally they are sea breeze land breeze valley breeze and mountain so first we shall see sea breeze and land breeze so generally tell me which one will get heated up during day the highest either land or sea it's the land which gets heated up first and it also cools first remember lands get heated up first and cools faster as well as heats faster only land so as during daytime what happens land cools land heats gets heated up faster so as it hit it is at higher temperature higher temperature means lower pressure so sea will be at sea will get heat lesser time so it will be at high pressure so during daytime the sea breeze will flow from sea to land that's why you see at particularly at the uh, beaches during the 12 o'clock in the afternoon the breeze will flow from sea to land if you are at Vishakhapatnam or Chennai or Mumbai or any other uh, beach places you can clearly observe in the afternoon the sea breeze will flow from sea to land next is land breeze so as the land gets cool faster in the night so it will be at higher pressure and sea will be at low pressure so land breeze land breeze will flow from land to sea in the night that's why you, we feel sultry in the night particularly in the beach places only okay so sea breeze will blow during daytime from sea to land and the land breeze will blow in the night time 
because of as a difference is only from land to sea in the night time that is called land breeze so hope you are clear with this very important topic next is local winds some more local winds valley breeze and mountain breeze so what happens during the valley between two mountains so the lower part will get heated up first because it is a directly onto the sun because compared to the slope the lower part of the ground part of the valley will be heated up first so as it heated up first so it will be at higher temperature higher temperature means lower pressure as it exp the air expands it will be at lower pressure so lower pressure means it will rise so this is called valley breeze it happens during daytime and what happens in the night the valley comparatively the lower the ground part will be at lower temperature lower temperature means high pressure so the from the top of the mountain the to the to the end of the edge of the mountain the mountain breeze will flow from the top to the bottom this is called a mountain breeze okay hope you are very clear with these concepts so moving on to el nino so what do you mean by el nino el nino means actually uh, the word means it is baby christ but what is actually el nino so peru peru means it is part of south america continent so peru has generally the colder waters but due to of heating up of the indian ocean what happens is it has the higher temperature water whenever there is high temperature water so high temperature means low pressure so what happens the winds instead of moving towards india or indian ocean or uh, the australia they get deflected towards peru instead of blowing towards india they move towards the peru or the south american continent and they doesn't cause rainfall to india china etc so this is called el nino so simply said the pressure difference will change because of the high heating of peruvian waters this is called el nino if it doesn't happen that is called la nina the normal phenomenon is called la nina the opposite to la nina is el nino and there will be no rainfall because of the el nino happening in the because of high heating of peruvian waters so this pressure difference will change this is called southern oscillation because it happens in southern hemisphere of the world so pressure differences are interchanged right so that's why it is called el nino southern oscillation enso because of el nino there will be no rainfall of in india particularly okay so some say it happens uh, five years some say it happens every year okay so it is very harmful for us and there will be lot of rainfall in the american continents because of el nino right so hope you are clear with the climate of the world we shall meet in the next sessions thank you